Well, welcome again to our online Church at Home service here from Chatterton Community Church. For those of you who have been back to school or work this week, I especially hope that you have had a good week. As it's the first Sunday in the month, towards the end of today's service, we will be sharing uh, in communion. So you again, you will need to provide some bread and a red drink if you would like to take part. Now I want to share a notice with you. Often around this time, we launch our church's participation in the Samaritan's Purse shoebox appeal. Obviously, we are unable to participate in the usual way this year. So what we are doing is encouraging as many people as possible to make up a shoebox online by visiting the website that you will see on the screen now. It costs £20. You have until the 25th of October and we would ask that if you do complete a box online to let us know so that we can collaborate our numbers. Just to say if you would rather give some money then please send it to either myself or Phil letting us know that it's towards the shoebox appeal. I will try and get out one of these letters to you which has on it all the information. So let's worship as we sing and join in our first song together, the song More Than Conquerors. Then our Bible reading will be read to us from Exodus 17 by Carol. strength is gone. You're the one who calls me on. You are the life. You are the fight that's in my soul. Oh, your resurrection power burns like fire in my heart. When waters rise, I lift my eyes up to your throne. Chain is breakable with you. 
Amalekites defeated. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Now I am sure that you have heard the saying, put your hands up. Maybe from a TV cop show or perhaps an old Western film, put your hands up. Well, that is the title of my talk today, put your hands up. It comes from the story that was read for us earlier from Exodus 17. We are in the Old Testament. Israel are in the desert after coming out of Egypt and crossing over the Red Sea. Here we read that Israel come under attack from the Amicalites. So Moses tells Joshua to take some men and go and fight. 
while he climbed to the top of a hill to overlook the battle. Aaron and her go with Moses. Then we have verse 11. It says this, As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amicalites prevailed. I want to say three things about that story today. The first is this, lowering tired hands. You know, when I read this passage, it reminds me of another TV program from the past, The World's Strongest Man. I wonder if you remember it. I think Jeff Cates used to represent the UK in it. One of the tests of strength was to hold out in front of you a heavy weight as long as you could. Over time, the muscles would begin to strain. It would get harder and harder to keep your hands up until eventually they would drop. The last one to drop their hands was obviously the winner. You know, I wonder if you can feel like that in life sometimes, not just physically. We try and keep going. We try to remain strong, maybe for ourselves, maybe for others. But as time goes by, it gets harder and harder and harder. We feel like our hands are starting to drop. Or perhaps other analyses are our heads start to drop. Our energy starts to drop. Our heart starts to drop. Our spirit starts to drop. We become tired and weary, maybe in our physical body or in our minds and emotions in our spirit and faith. I think one reason for our loss of strength, for tiredness and weariness, could be the length that, of the battle that we are in. I am sure that Moses hoped that the battle against the Amicalites would be over very quickly, so he didn't have to keep his hands up for very long but it wasn't to be. Perhaps some of us feel that life has been a battle now for a long time, in our circumstances, perhaps in our relationships, in our health, and of course, more recently, through the effects of COVID-19. We hoped it would be over quickly, who would have expected COVID-19 to dominate our lives for so long? But it has, and in many ways, it still does. It can feel like a long battle. And for some of us, it has made us tired and weary. Our hands are starting to drop. Just to say two things before I move on. For some people today, you need to hear again those words, the promise of Jesus in Matthew 11, said this, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and lean, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For some, I believe, there is a need to find the space to allow yourself to rest in and with your God. To allow him to lift the weight of the burden of the battle from you, at least for a time. To allow your God to lead you beside quiet waters so that he might refresh your soul 
as a good shepherd does for his sheep. And secondly this, I felt as I was preparing this that a number of people who might be watching, one of the reasons that they are tired at the moment is because you are struggling with sleep. And perhaps for some of you, you have done so for some time. So what I want to do now, just quickly really, is just pray for you. Let me pray. Dear God, you know if anyone who is watching this is struggling with sleep. Maybe recently, or maybe they have done for some time. And because of this, they have become tired and weary. I pray now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will break this cycle in them and help them at night to find peace and rest and good sleep so that they may be refreshed fully for the next day ahead. Amen. So my second point today. Who do you need to help you hold up your hands? Moses was a great Bible man of God. He is one of the heroes of faith. But he needed help, and he allowed himself to be helped. First, we all need help sometimes. Even the strongest, physically, emotionally, spiritually, among us. I know we don't often like to admit it when we are struggling. We need to keep the British upper lip. We perhaps believe the lie that it is a sign of weakness. We might feel that we are letting people down, but this helps no one. Secondly, he allowed himself to be helped. Again, even if we admit that we need help, there is no guarantee we will allow ourselves to be helped. Again, we are often just not good at it. So what do we do? Well, many of us will just try and cope on our own. Just keep going. Perhaps we'll try to hide it. Hope it will go away. Which, of course, it rarely does. And from my experience, it probably will just get worse. So where does our help come from? Well, just to mention three very quickly. The first is people. Who are our Aaron and Urs? They were the ones who held up Moses' arms when they started to drop. Do we have people who will stand beside us? If so, first let us give thanks for them. They are very precious. Maybe some of us today need to let our own Aaron and Urs know that we appreciate them. But for some of us, we might need to go to them again. And to be honest, and to let them know that we are struggling and allow them again to help us. Secondly, from God, Psalm 121 starts with these words. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Where does my help come from? From the maker of heaven and earth. From God. Let's not leave God out when things get too heavy. He is big and he is our loving heavenly Father. And so I believe that we can push into him. We can lean on him 
ask for his help to renew our strength, to help us to carry on, to get through the battle. And the third place is from ourself. You know, we might have to make some not easy to make choices. We might have to do something even when we don't really want to. We might have to push ourselves through a barrier. Just an example. There have been times when I haven't really felt like worshipping, even in those good old days when we used to meet together. But sometimes I have pushed myself, disciplined myself, chosen to do it anyway. And as I have done so, God has often met me in that choice and has lifted me again from other people, from God and from ourselves. Where does that help come from? And so my final point today is this, who can we help? You know, I've said already that I believe there are times when we all need help, but there are also times when we can help others. My mum and dad are a great example. Sometimes one of them is not too good. So what happens is that the other one kind of supports and steps up. Sometimes it's the other one then who's not so good, so then they swap uh, turns around and the other one is the more supportive one. I know the issue is that when they're both not so good. But just another question as we move towards the end of my message. Who might need others to be an Aaron or an Ur today? In our story today, did Moses ask for help? Well, we are not sure. Or did Aaron and her just notice he needed help? And so they acted. Might we have the insight to look around us and to notice anyone who might be struggling, who might need some support, who might need to know that someone is there beside them? to offer a practical helping hand, perhaps a word of encouragement to support in prayer. Let's just sit for a moment with God and ask him, is there anyone like that? A name that he might bring to our mind, even in this moment. You know what? It might not even be obvious that they are struggling or that they need any help. But in the end, even if we say, uh, send that encouraging text and they're not struggling, it won't be wasted by God. I end with this. This story reminds me again that we all have a different part to play in the battle. Joseph, sorry, Joshua was on the front line physically. Moses was praying on the hilltop. Aaron and Hur, well, they were giving practical support. But remember, they all played an important part in the victory. So let us keep playing our part so that we also can share in the victory together. Amen. So as we think on those words and as we prepare ourselves again to share communion together, let us be reminded of the meaning of communion really as we sing the song, Amazing Grace, My Chains. I go. Amazing grace.
To take communion, let us first again acknowledge the meaning of the cross. Romans 5 verse 8 says this, But God demonstrated his love for us, that in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So now let us come to God in confession. 
asking for the forgiveness of our sins. Those things that we have done and not done, which go against God's will and best for us. Let's take a moment in the quiet to do that privately now. We thank you, God, again for your grace and mercy and for your love for us. Amen. You know, as we take communion together again today, I pray that God, by the Holy Spirit, will meet with you wherever you are. I especially pray that if God has spoken to you through the message today, perhaps you are tired. Perhaps the weight of the battle has caused your hands, your head, your heart, your energy, your spirit to drop. Then I pray that he will send his Holy Spirit to rest upon you, to refresh you and renew your strength and hope. So, now let us come to take the bread together. Lord God, as we take this bread, we remember your body, broken on the cross, in our place, as a sacrifice of love. So now let us drink together. Lord God, as we drink from this cup, we remember your blood was shed for us on the cross. And through your blood, today we are cleansed and rescued. Again, let us pray. Just for a moment, God, we again say those powerful words. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Touch our lives anew. Touch our lives afresh. Fill us again. I lift my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We thank you, God, for this promise to all those who call upon your name. We thank you that this is true for each one of us today. Amen. And so we're going to sing our final song, the song, The Lord's My Shepherd.
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup is overflows with joy. I feast on His good and I. Will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. again thank you for joining us today let me finish with a facebook post this week that was posted this week by christine cairn it reads this don't stop don't stop praying don't stop believing don't stop trusting don't stop hoping don't stop loving don't stop giving don't stop serving. Don't stop forgiving. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop worshipping. Don't stop laughing. Don't stop learning. Don't stop growing. Don't stop. Pray that you will take those words into your week. So, God bless.